to make sure the microphones are on. We'd also like to uh, welcome viewers to Facebook Live at the moment for the uh, launch of uh, AIR's seventh season of sponsorship of the 2017 All-Ireland Senior Football Championship. We're here in the dressing room number one in uh, Croke Park, uh, dressing rooms here at Croke Park where all these lads want to be come the end of the summer. Um, Owen, let's start with yourself uh, because Cork were in action over the weekend. It was, it was a bit of a tight one. You were watching on from the sidelines. Um, a little too close for comfort perhaps? Yeah, definitely too close for comfort. Uh, it's probably an understatement really. Um, the last seven weeks, I suppose, everything we do was in preparation for the championship. Um, the league was kind of in a mixed bag really for us. Some highs, some lows. Um, and we would have felt that we trained and got ourselves in a very, very good situation to go and perform. Unfortunately, Saturday night's performance didn't reflect the amount of work that was put in. But in saying that, the bottom line is we're in the Munster semi final, um, and that's really the all that matters, really. Cork fans will want to know exactly where you're at personally in terms of your fitness. Uh, you didn't make the weekend. Will you make Tipperary? Yeah, so back into training uh, the last few weeks. Um, had an operation back in August and, and had a few setbacks along the way throughout the league, so um, I think the most important thing for me is that I'm fresh in the mind, looking forward to getting back and contributing in, in any shape or form I can really. Kenyon, what about yourself back at Crow Park? I um, don't want to bring up old wounds or anything now, but how are you feeling being back here? Good, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously where we all want to be, we all want to play um, later in the summer, so um, ideally if we can keep training, keep working and try and keep winning and get back here with the team, it'd be great. Lots of talk uh, surrounding Mayo, as always it seems to be. It, does it become easier to block it out because you're used to it now at this stage, or how do you deal with it? Um, I think, I was saying earlier on today, like, I suppose we are kind of used to the to, to, to what goes on with the, the coverage and um, I suppose the scrutiny that, that every game and every, um, every, every player is under, but, you know, we all enjoy it, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't bog us down and, um, yeah, I think with experience you kind of get that little bit better at focusing on your training and recovery, your games and, um, you know, not expending too much energy on other things. Paddy, it's good to see you back. I know uh, everyone out in Selbridge is happy to have you back as well and uh, you're back involved with the Kildare Senior Football team. Only back a few weeks in Australia now, though. How have you found it returning? Yeah, I found it good. Um, it's good to be home, good to be involved with Kildare again. Um, one thing I always missed while I was over in Australia was playing football with Kildare and Selbridge, so it's good to be home and back in training with the boys and looking forward to a long summer. And working with the round ball again? Yeah, it's a bit different to the oval one, but uh, something more natural to it. How have you found life under, under Keane O'Neill? Kildare have made uh, great strides in the last couple of years. Yeah, Keane seems to be uh, very good. We've, uh, we had a good league campaign, obviously uh, disappointing in the Division 2 final, but good to get promotion and uh, the boys are working hard and looking for progress for the summer. Jack, you were one of the stars of the league campaign, a league that in the main went very well for Monaghan. Um, is there an air of expectancy around the side now heading in? You've already had the, the preliminary game against Fermanagh. It could be a very long summer for you in terms of the amount of games played, would you hope? Yeah, hopefully so. Um, yeah, the league went all okay for ourselves. I suppose um, disappointing the way that against Open by losing. Um, probably should have put them away, but we obviously didn't. Um, yes, there's a, there's a wee bit of expectancy now about us, but um, we just take Calvin in a couple of weeks' time and try to improve on our performance against Fermanagh the last day. Um, as John was mentioning earlier, technology is very much at the heart of what AIR do and something we, we wanted to talk about today um, was the role, the increasing role of technology in, in the game these days. Owen, if I can come to you, maybe I don't want to say as the elder statesman in the panel up there, but I think it's 10 years ago since you made your, your court debut now, is it for the footballers. Was there a role for technology 10 years ago uh, and how, how much things have changed between then and now? Um, I think that the preparation is continuously advancing in terms of technology, that's been made available to players and to teams. Um, I'm working with the Cork 21 hurlers and I see myself the amount of, I suppose, technology that we can utilise to get the most out of these guys. Um, I think any of the three other lads up here will tell you that recovery is a vital part of training games. Uh, so much so that we use apps such as markers for sleep, food intake, um, mood, which wasn't too good at Sunday morning, <laughs> um, and so on. So all these markers are a great indication of how ready a player is to play or his readiness to train. So um, you can tell that the markers were quite low on Sunday morning, so uh, wasn't too many guys went to train. But look, it's continuously advancing. You have GPS data, um, you see the volume and the intensity that players are now playing at. So if you can get that data back from the likes of, say, all in finals between Dublin, Mayo, or Kerry, whoever it is, and then try to utilise that information in your training session, it gives you a step forward. 
Yeah, Killian, what about yourself? Because, you know, as part of a side that, that has come so close, maybe it's about just getting that extra one or two percent. Can technology play a role in that? Do you think? Yeah, that's exactly it. We're always looking for um, little percentage gains all the time, you know, it's not, it's not as if any team is going to get, you know, one magic answer that's going to fix all their problems. So anywhere you can make small little, small little improvements, as Owen said, is um, you're going to go after them. And, We've been the same, we've been utilising um, as much information as we can get, um, you know, to, to kind of guide our training, you know, when to increase the load, when to get a lot of, you know, your heavy work done or your heavy lifting done and, um, you know, when to taper off and when to reduce and I suppose ideally you want to, um, you want to be at your freshest and your peak condition in, in every aspect, um, you know, around now come championship time. Has it taken a while, do you think, uh, in, in the years that you've been involved with Mayo, for the players to, to fully accept this or have the players thrown themselves into it realizing that this is the way forward now? I think um, well definitely in recent times players um, have really taken on board because I suppose at the very beginning of when I started playing you know um, maybe maybe I'd say there might have been a percentage or a perception that you know it's it's just about football and it's just about what happens inside the white lines but um, you know th that's definitely not the case people now are realizing over the last few years that this this there's so little between so many of the teams that, you know, if you're not looking for gains in, in, in other, um, you know, whether it's your lifestyle, whether it's your hydration, your diet, if you're not making gains in those areas, then your marker and another team is, and you're going to fall behind. So um, we try and stay stay uh, stay ahead of the curve and, and, and keep improving. Paddy, you're of course coming back from a, a real professional uh, background and approach over in Australia. How heavily is it all leaned on over there and, and, and what are you thinking about coming back here then? Yeah, it's uh, plays an important factor, obviously, over in Australia, but um, mainly due to the opposition analysis. So, um, obviously, the technology can give you ideas on what the opposition are doing well or their weaknesses, and you can focus on that as well. Um, it also gives you an insight into your training as well and your preparation, so um, you get a good insight into how you're performing in training and what you can work on as well. So, if you review it and look at it, um, is an important factor in how you can pro progress and improve. How much weight do, do Monaghan put on it, uh, Jack? And is there any part of it in particular that you feel aids your own personal game? Yeah, well, I suppose, say, the last couple of years, I suppose, coming back from a number of injuries, you can use the GPS data to see, and um, it's very good to see where, where you have been at in the past and where you are now. It can guide you and lead you to when you're coming back to full fitness as well. So it's been very important for myself um, coming back from injury, and I think it, it helps to. People as well in way. So so far, everyone's in agreement that it's all very positive. But uh, you know, looking for any drawbacks at all, I guess there, there's no place to hide now, is there? Because everything's logged, as you said. Your mood is taken into account. There's nowhere to hide for any of you guys anymore. Yeah, I suppose the one thing about the technology, and maybe slight downfall, is um, if Killian has GPS data and he only moves 500 meters an hour and finally scores 2 2. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to be saying, Well, Killian, your markers are done. Like, so uh, I suppose the most important thing from a technology point of view is that you incorporated the skill aspect and the training aspect as well as all this technology because there can be a consensus that the focus is too much on technology and the very, very basic skills that are forgotten about. So, um, going the skills and the data all go hand in hand. And, this man's going from here on meter and stuff. So. <laughs> so the three lads around you, obviously, you're saying it's heavily weighted in, in, in uh, favour of all the forwards, that all they have to do is score. It doesn't matter how far they run or don't run. No forwards, they don't run here. <laughs> <laughs> um, let, let's uh, move on to just to the, the championship now. You've all, I think all of our paddy have been out this season and all with success as well. Those we said, Owen, maybe still wiping the sweat from your brow after it was a little bit too close there for you, for you down. But uh, you'll be hoping it's a, a long summer ahead. Killian, from your point of view, you've got one game under the belt, and now it's it's Galway to come next, and that's always always a big game. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of a fixture that I suppose a lot of the team, a lot of our team, would have grown up, you know, going to nail Galway matches, uh, beating Castlebar or, or Trum or Salt Hill, and in recent times um, we've been lucky enough to play in those those big games, and. Um, it's just kind of one that I'm sure we'll always look forward to, but definitely as Mayo players, um, we always look forward to coming up against the Maroon jersey, and June 11th is, is going to be the same. So thankfully, we, we overcame Sligo and Castlebar, and um, that's our reward. Now we get to have a crack at Galway. I know last year was last year, but is there a feeling in Mayo at the moment, given Galway and the local rivals, that you've got an edge there? Um, no, I don't think so. I think, um, you know, them as kind of champions now, certainly, um, 
have, have gone from strength to strength. Um, they've they had a good league campaign and were successful in Division Two. Um, so I suppose they've they brought through some good under twenty one players in the last few years as well. They're under twenty one kind of champions, Division Two champions, and um, you know from our point of view, we had a couple of years of success recently with the kind of championship, and um, last year didn't go that way. So. Our hunger remains the same to get our hands back on the Nestor Cup, and um, you know if we want to do that, June eleventh has to go our way. So um, it's kind of it's a big challenge for us, but it's it's one that I think the lads are all looking forward to. So enjoy the next two weeks, and hopefully we'll be ready for for battle. Oh, and I'm sure the lads here there'll be a lot of uh, Colin Inches devoted to the fact that it's Tipperary for Cork next after what happened last year as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, Tipperary had a fantastic year last year. Um, they continued our form into the league campaign, uh, pipping Armagh in the lead. Um, so I'm sure they're coming in brimming of confidence and uh, not too worried after what they saw doing in Wad for the last Saturday night. So we're in a situation where we're two weeks out now and we're looking forward to Munster semi final. That's the bottom line. Pressure there? For Tipperary? <laughs> Well, yeah, as, as a court man, it's all I've to You know, um, as I said, like our performance wouldn't exactly uh, worry too many people uh, last Saturday night, so it's up to ourselves as players now to put in a big shift for the next two weeks and correct any kind of wrongdoings that happened last Saturday and um, give it a lash back and forth. Paddy, you've got Leash, uh, you're coming up this weekend. Um, are you personally going to be the wild card for Kildare this year? Uh, not too sure about that yet. I've only been back about three weeks, but. Um, yeah, I'm training hard, working hard, and just trying to get my skills back to where they were. Um, Leash this Sunday is going to be a massive test as well. Um, they they come off a great victory against Longford as well, so it's going to be a big test and local neighbours as well. So um, it'll be a really physical battle of effort. How unusual has it been for you to, to just come back to a game, but a game that you grew up with? You say you have to just get back to, to the skills of the game again. Obviously, as we said, to the round ball, maybe you have to be careful of the tackle now coming back with the black card here as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I better be aware of not, not to rugby tackle anyone, that's for sure. But um, yeah, like I said, I've been away from the game for nearly three years, so just readjusting to the, to the round ball again and um, just get my skills back up to shape and stuff, so hopefully it won't take too long anyway. What about the squad that you've walked into there? Um, as we said, a very couple of good years under, under Keen O'Neill. What have you made of the lads there? Has much changed since, since you've been gone? Yeah, yeah, a bit has changed. Um, it's a much younger squad now. There's a lot of good young players coming from recent under-21 and minor teams that are coming along as well. Um, very competitive squad and it's very player-driven and I've been very impressed with the setup so far, so I'm looking forward to the summer ahead. And Jack, from your point of view, that Ulster Championship again looks uh, seriously competitive. We saw the game yesterday and we, you know, as we said, if you, you've had to start in the preliminary round, it'll be a very hard one Ulster Championship, it seems this year. Yeah, definitely so. It's very um, preliminary round, just saw about getting over that and suppose we did that when I in a couple weeks' time with Cavan and um, played them in the league now this year and there's a draw game and then the last two times we played them in the championship it's been very close as well. So there'll be nothing between the two teams and there'll probably be a dog fight between us. I don't know if we should, if I should finish like this, but um I'd just like to get to you if you'd be brave enough to, to rate the other counties here sitting next to you. Jack, do you want to go first? Maybe I'll be Sam. Paddy I'll join Jackie saying I'll present. Owen? No comment. Killian, <laughs> they're all uh, virtually in your direction for the most part anyway, what do you think? I think there could be three dark horses here. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks very much. It's been uh, fantastic to have you today. Thank you for having us. Thank you for joining us all and wishing you a very long uh, summer ahead and much success to you all as well. Thanks for being here today. And uh, if you would like to follow Kieran, the players.